these are thoughts that we as a community, as a culture, have been feeling for decades. A decade now. Now it's it's just built up into a song. And Kendrick has just curated all the conversations that we've been having as a people. And Drake has been stuck in his echo chamber. He's too rich. He got too much money. He doesn't understand that. Hey now, say now. We got the same 24. What you mad for? Fuck that! Yo, I'm at the point. Let me run that back. <laughs> Hey, academics and mall been fighting over Drake for a minute, man. They been going back and forth saying, nah, the boy's mine. No, the boy's mine. The boy's mine. The boy's mine. And Drake don't give a damn about neither one of these dudes. They really sitting back fighting over Drake. This crazy. Like, over your fans, they starting to turn on academics. They starting to turn on mall, but they don't like, they don't like nothing. Fuck that. Yo, I'm at the point. Even if y'all say Drake ain't win, I'm rooting for any nigga that can fuck Kendrick up. I'm tired of this shit. He got rappers sounding like hoes. Niggas apologizing, scrolling through their text messages, unsending. What is this nigga doing? Y'all got the same 24 hours in a day. Why can't y'all squabble with this little midget? The fuck? Hey man. <laughs> hey, Kendrick the Boogeyman dog. Everybody getting their feelings. Everybody crashing out. So it's like it is what it is, man. Hey, y'all know Wack 100, he he on and off, man. He could be spinning facts, he could be capping or exaggerating the truth at least. But hey man. Let's see what Wack talking about, man. Uh-oh, I see it coming. What's going on? I heard the whole crew is crying like a new baby on the internet. I just gave you the appetizer and it's already tricking your boss out of care to stop all the cap and let's get down to business. Ooh. And apparently... <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Like... Even if it's not true, you feel me? You could just say about the energy that Kendrick put in GNX that he feel that type of way. He on that type of time. You feel me? Like that's one of the reasons why GNX has been played so much by me. Especially these last what week and a half since it's been out. Like, bro, it's like I said, it's the energy. The energy. These are thoughts that we as a community, as a culture, have been feeling for a decade. For a decade now. Now it's, it's just built up into a song. And Kendrick has just curated all the conversations that we've been having as a people. And Drake has been stuck in his echo chamber. He's too rich. He got too much money. He doesn't understand that. And I remember seeing uh, this video earlier where Kendrick and Dave Free were talking about how even though they are commercial, they still want to remain underground. So there's a certain balance that you have to have. And Kendrick has that balance. Kendrick has that balance of he's a superstar, but he's still human. He still maintains that essence of being a part of the community. At least he gives off the image and you can tell he is actually moving this way because of the thoughts he thinks, the music he puts out, his actual subconscious that he puts into his music. You have to have these genuine conversations to even be able to create this art, to vibrate at this frequency. You have to think these thoughts. You can only vibrate what you are. So that goes back to the Drake line was saying, like, he can steal your audience if he were conscious. Like, bro, no, you're not. You're not conscious, bro. That works on your audience. It works on the academics, the ones who don't actually read, the ones who don't meditate, the ones who do anything in their power to run away from their own internal dialogue. That works on them. But understand, from a digital marketing perspective, if this is your customer persona, understand why he needs so many viewers. It's almost like, right now, me as... Someone who has, what, 8,000 subscribers, man. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. But I don't need millions of views each and every single video because my audience is filled with scholars. 
is filled with powerful people. I'm intentionally saying words in a specific connotation. I'm saying things like energy and Carl Jung and frequency and alignment. And I'm saying certain things to attract a certain audience and repel a certain audience. So my audience doesn't need to be huge because my audience is so saturated with true, powerful people, true teachers, true educated professionals, people that are truly excellent. Even my name, Star Ski, is abundance. So going between the high vibration and low vibration, if you don't know these things, if you think they're just trendy words, then homie, it is what it is, bro. So certain books, certain names like Carl, Carl Jung and Bob Proctor, and Nikola Tesla, uh, Napoleon Hill. Certain names, uh, let's see, Alan Watts, Neville Goodhart. Certain books that I'm saying, The Four Agreements, Outwitting the Devil, The Greatest Salesman, the alchemist. The, I am attracting people that actually read. People that are actually in leadership positions. So on the other end, you have to Drake. Once again, he's attracting the, the people like DJ Academics and Maul and Andrew Schultz. They have no real strength in our community. They're not leaders. They're not thought leaders. No one's actually running to them and asking them for anything specific. Like, they have no actual substance. They just exist. They're just gathering attention. Once again, they're narcissists receiving narcissistic supply. No more, no less. So they have no choice but to have a bunch of people, millions of people, give them views because that's how they get paid. Because the people that they actually attract are usually young and children, right? So they can't actually spend anything. So advertisers need them to have a bunch of viewers in order to get what I get. Because my audience, they actually are doing pretty well. And if you're not doing well, once again, you are, once again, you understand energy, you understand frequency. You understand the value of the mind and your time. So you're not spending time on things that you don't like. You would never disrespect yourself. You would never disrespect your subconscious. So why are you watching entertainment that you don't actually believe in so that's the reason why i rarely get hate comments i rarely get hate comments and if you know anything just about love in general i know a, a lot of times you may hear the question would you rather be loved or feared but in my audience you fear how much i love myself you fear how much i'm actually willing to physically take care of my body Mentally, I'm actually reading books. Spiritually, once again, we're actually doing the shadow work. So they fear how much we actually love ourselves. So when we say we're going to train, we actually get up and train. My entire Holy Trinity is genuinely as strong as I claim it to be. So you can either do anything or you can do nothing. Homie, the result would be the same for me. The friend of sinners. The middle way. Like Buddha. Ying and Yang. Come on. You got to have both. Up, down. You got to have both of them. It is what it is, man. So, man, shout out to Kendrick. Shout out to SZA. Hey, they... <laughs> hey, man, they going through... Uh, They going through it, bro. I'll see what this is, man. It's Toronto Blue Jays, man. They tweeted out, Kendrick Lamar visits Rogers Center in June. Tickets go on sale December 6th at 10 a.m. And y'all know the Drake fans, man, they can't stand it. Even though this is normal, right? Of course, with the beef, the Drake fans have been going, going crazy, man. And little fans of, <laughs> are really upset in the comments, man. Tell me your cheese and farm. Hey, bro. And y'all know the narrative that Drake is this all-powerful Six God, right? Y'all know he got uh, Sir's show counsel. He got Schoolboy Q, his show counsel. But that's only because he actually owned that uh, actual venue that they were booked to perform in. So he had that power. I'm telling y'all, these millionaires and billionaires, they don't give a damn about no rap beef, man. If Kendrick is coming and he's bringing money, uh, Kendrick's coming. 
Drake, and there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. <laughs> the same way, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, Drake, he can come through in L.A. He can still do shows, and there's nothing, nothing's going to happen, bro. It's too much money involved with both of these dudes. Nah, ain't nothing happening. So, look, <laughs> we will not be going. <laughs> hey, man. Drake, he should have never called the cops, bro. He should have never went to the feds. Should have never went. He should have never called them boys, man. He went and got his lawyers. So now, this what it is, bro. It is what it is, man. I'm going to say that. Say that image, motherfucker. That's gonna be the next thumbnail. Low key. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Drake, get up. Uh, it's crazy, bro. GGs, I'm sick to my stomach, and this is going to be a rough time for Drake. It's going to be a rough time. I know he's still going to get his numbers, still going to get his stats, but it's over. His name, his brand, his reputation. He can never recover, especially after being sued. Well, him suing Kendrick, nah. He, he's not hip-hop at all. He doesn't write his own lyrics. He sues, call the people, calls his lawyers. Nah, that's not hip-hop, bro. You got to get out of here. But it is what it is, man. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next video, man.